against I don't know his name. Somebody's name, <laughs> I can't remember his name. I think it's Shortcake. Shortcake coming to <laughs> the right hand side. You said it, not me. Heath Haney, ladies and gentlemen, from Broken Arrow. Down there. One of the great track operators in the country, of course. A guy who loves to run his mouth almost as much as Donald does over here in the Haltech side. That's right. Donald's like, man, if he gets number one, I'll never hear the end of it. We're going to find <laughs> out. Well, David DeMarco, the 84 Buick that has been part of their family, part of his racing program since he was in high school. I personally have watched this car evolve up in the New England area from a basically a stock car to something that was running in the 10s, the 9s, and the, the latest iteration of this car of course has a screw blown Hemi in it DMC Dennis McPherson the chassis builder a much known up there in the New England area works about 10 minutes from my house close to the door on DeMarco this car was very consistent at the World Series they're in a couple or rather the uh, the World Cup they're in a couple of 80s that weekend he did he went career best in the 380s so Lonnie Hood doing the tuna this weekend DMC racing that car. let's see what happens can the boys of New England they're eating their lobster going down the track baby can he put it on if Keith Haney actually goes to number one, it'll be front page on every newspaper in America. That's right. Let's see if he can put some racing stripes. Oh, we don't want stripes on it. Never mind. Let's see what happens. Short kick, baby. Brandon Squared out there. How about him out? Brandon Pass versus Brandon Schweitzer on the phone. Let's see if Keith Haney can shut everybody up and go number one. Jeffers Race Guys. Big shout out for them for getting the car back together. Let's see what's going to happen right here. The shortest man in drag racing. Can he go number one? He was this close, Brian. Missed number one by four thousandths, but a great effort there. 991, the quickest short time we have seen of the night so far. 261 of the 330. DeMarco spun the tire pretty early on. You heard the revs go right to the moon and the big blown Hemi out there. So Haney, pretty aggressive early on, puts him number four right now, and we now have the top eight cars, all under four seconds. Right Keith Haney, the man in the Enigma car down here. Who? You know his name. <laughs> says it. Says it on the thing right there, actually. I know his name. What's his name? Uh, John Smith. Wait, I think that's Donald Long behind the wheel. The Switzer Dynamics Pro Nitro. Oh, no, Breaking no, that's not news. it. So that's right. Haney said he's going to sit aside. It's Duck behind the wheel of the 16 Camaro. No, well, I'm just kidding. They wouldn't have to move the seat back anyway. That's right. You know, yeah. the shortest guy in drag racing is driving right now. <laughs> Jason Brock from Baton, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, or Baton Rouge, Louisiana, the 2004 Mustang. 960 cubic inches in the front of the Red Baron Racing Mustang. And Keith Haney, the big 948-inch rear Morrison power plant. You see Haney purging the nitrous. Track operator, very successful businessman, very successful car dealer out there in Oklahoma. Look at that, Kryptonite Customs watching on also. They did the wrap job. Big shout out Larry Jeffers Race Cars and Brandon Pence, of course, and somebody came in from uh, Sweden to help out. That car is the class of the field, man, consistency-wise. 392, 8, 195 for Haney. Brock's in the number six spot, but what's important to note is that car is repeated in the 90s several times. Wow, that was a great side-by-side -side matchup, too. Good for the fans out there. I love it. Look at this matchup. I like it. I like it. Barry Mitchell will be uh, coming to life here momentarily, but Keith Haney, nobody knows his name from Oklahoma. That rear Mars of power, Ignima Top Seeker is going to be coming alive. Mm. Mm. 
But hold your ears, as this is the most anticipated car going into this event. Barry Mitchell is going to be coming alive with a big blower car. Billy Stockwood said it's on you, baby. Ah, oh, I like it. So get your dollars out. Where's the bet, man? That's right, Nitrous going against Blower Kai. Two of the best of the business right here. Ken Haney, get the lockup working and go number one. Brandon Penn's been working hard on the car with Cody Moore. And the guy from Sweden, he flew all the way from Sweden two weeks ago just to get the car back together and help out. Pretty awesome uh, story if you get a chance to talk to him. But Barry Mitchell to right hand side, Tim McCabe is race cars. Billy Stockland, Ty Tuttero, everybody helps out with this car. Anything's going to happen right here. I think impossible to think any other way that both of these crews have the, uh, the throw the kitchen sink at a tune up in both of these race cars. We have seen great stuff happening all throughout the early parts of this session. Over 50 cars have tried to qualify for this 32 car field. These are two of the best. 391 from Haney was a nice run at one time, but it ain't going to cut the mustard anymore if you want to be in the top eight of the 32 cars. That's right, he's bringing the catch up this time, baby. He's gonna have the lockup working the left-hand side of the racetrack. Unpredicted, 370s out of Haney right here. Watch the candles lit underneath the lights right here at SGMP. Cash is king, baby. Radio versus the world. sets the record and says see you later look at the crew down there Haney goes 381 at 198 but wow Mitchell history in the making right there world record 373 with an eight Haney picks up a 10 381 and Haney looked like he was tied to a stump out there as Barry Mitchell resets the all-time record on a radial tire 373 with an eight and we are just getting this thing started wow That's a four paragraph story on that run alone. All right, here's one we've anticipated. Yeah. Two of the biggest uh, crap talkers on the internet, Kai Kelly and Keith Haney. So Kai Kelly, the shocker, it's got huge. They said it's like 1300 plus cubic inches. No, I'm just kidding, but it's Kai Kelly, you're not allowed to give out your uh, cubic inches because it's a grudge car, right? Yeah. Oh, well, I think yeah. it's close to 988. Yeah. So the uh, Bankston racing team over here on the right-hand side, your number 29 qualifier, can he pull off the upset and take out Shortcake? Donna Long is currently rubbing a small version of Kai Kelly's car for good luck down there. <laughs> That's right. He's like, all right, can you imagine if Keith Haney wins the whole thing? <laughs> oh, boy. I cannot imagine that. There are a couple things working against Kai Kelly here. The position of the motor in this car is very far back. It's designed to be a grudge car, a race on less than great services, race on the street. So it's designed to transfer a maximum amount of weight in a pretty violent fashion to the rear end. That's why he's been having a lot of trouble with wheel stands. Trying to tame the car down is against its physical nature, that it is set up to hook up in a car wash. And we got him on top of some of the best prepared surface he'll ever see, and it has not been an easy transition. At the car wash. Oh, sorry. What are you, you, are you saying the Frank Sinatra version of that song? Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> it's called the tired Frank Sinatra <laughs> at the car wash. Keith Haney to the left-hand side. Enigma coming at you. The Pro Nitrous car. Well, actually, he runs Pro Nitrous also with the car that looks exactly like that. But the Larry Jeffers built the uh, race car. Keith Haney, short K, coming at you. Kenny, take it home right here. One of the most intriguing matchups of the entire first round. Kai Kelly's Three. in, and Kelly just dives straight in. Keith Haney gets his act together. The tree flashes. Huge wheel stand again for Kelly, and Kai is going back to New Orleans as Keith Haney goes 392-193. Yeah, look at Haney, 99-860 foot. Those guys just said, go A to B, I want to go rounds. Kai Kelly was shooting for it, and it went to the moon. Home of the flying cars right here. Lights out eight. We're waiting for, uh, there we go. Sounds like we're going to have a pair. The first pair, 
Second round of eliminations, race fans. Make sure to get your seat because fifty thousand dollars up for grabs in a big ring. It takes up your whole hand. That's how big it is. Or if you're Keith Haney, it's about as tall as he is. Josh Kluger coming up on the Haltech side to face off against Keith Haney from Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, the 2016 Camaro. He calls it Enigma. You know his name. 248 cubic or 948 cubic inches of rare Morrison nitrous motor. You see the Schweitzer Dynamics sticker on the hood scope. You see that great wrap. And then we see a stock wheelbase Mustang. That's Ray Shree from the showroom, pretty much compared to the left-hand side of the racetrack. You know, it's yeah, to put no, it's it in a good point. perspective. As the racecraft, of course, uh, helped build this car, or built the car originally, and then, of course, uh, Kluger bought it, and the Kluger Fist has raced his team, the first ever radial tire car in the five-second zone, and he decided to keep it, so that's pretty cool. But all I, this is a good matchup right here. Can the top secret Enigma, which, remember, last season made its debut, and he actually kept it from even his crew. His crew didn't even know about it. Yeah. Brand new Larry Jeffers race car. And here he is right now making the best passes of his career. And once again, we have that matchup where, or we have a kind of a display of why this style of drag racing is so popular. I mean, you're not going to see a matchup that looks like this in any other form of the sport. You won't. Not only that, you got two cars that could, both of them have a shot to win. Kluger is not here by charity or by luck. He's here because they race their way there. They qualified the uh, top half of the field, number 13. Haney was world class out there, qualifying number four, the low 380s. Yes, here you go. Battle of the engine builders also, right? Yes. Eric Dillard up here in the tower. Pro line power in the right hand side. It is Rear Morse in the left. So you got top one of the top nitrous builders in the left hand side and the top twin turbo builder or turbocharged builder in the right hand side. A legacy engine building company and another company that is actively building a legacy as we speak. Kluger is pre staged. Keith Haney taking his time. Can he pull it off? Put him in the beams. Right here we go. SGMP. Six one ninety four short gigs gonna move on, baby, to the next round. And Haney has moved now to the round of eight. Personality wise, Lee, we got a very big uh, clash up here. Mark Woodruff, pretty quiet guy. Not a big talker. Let's the car do the talking. He's a walk softly, carry a big stick guy. Keith Haney, jabber jaw. Videos are flying, memes are flying, songs are flying around about this guy. So Keith Haney, definitely the louder of the two in terms of the uh, social media presence. We'll All see right. what Woody can do. Big Nigma coming to life. Here comes Woody in the right hand side. This car is on a mission. That big Hemi Nelson Power, Mark Woodruff, of course, from uh, Missouri, the 2010 Corvette. Larry Jeffers race car, updated machine. Actually, Larry Jeffers race car is pretty much both sides of the racetrack here. So we're going to find out if Woodruff can take him out because he is on a mission. And, uh, you know, it's kind of like a golden gorilla, no mercy. Somebody that's been here a long time that's trying to prove something. Well, I think Woody's trying to do it now. Absolutely, 100%. He definitely has the car underneath him that can run for the big money tonight. But so does it Keith Haney. Haney's been living in the 80s. The car has been deadly consistent, has not exhibited any of the weird kind of uh, tendencies it's had over years past. He's had a much smoother race, probably the smoothest lights out he's ever had with this car. Yeah, actually, Brandon Square helps him out. Brandon Pez, of course, uh, been there a long time. Sweden, guy from Sweden came in. I don't know his name because I don't know how to pronounce it more than anything else, but it's pretty awesome that he came in, fixed the car with two weeks to go to the event, and he was pretty much a mess. So let's see if Keith Haney can take him out right here. The man with the booster seat, short cake. I'll be putting him in the beams. Haney's going to be second to stage. Oh, yeah, bring it on. And it's going to be Woodruff, 384.7, 211.3 miles an hour. Mark Woodruff advances to the semifinal round, and Keith Haney was quicker to 60 feet. But between 60 and 330, the engine was not happy. 
He was then trailing Woodruff by almost a tenth of a second at 60 feet, and Woodruff stretched it to nearly well, to over two tenths by the stripe. Haney goes 4.065, 185, and Mark Woodruff is down to the final four for $50,000. Now, the big question is, which I'm going to go answer right now, who's supposed to face Stevie Fast next round?